Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing as it helps out the channel and give this video a like if you do like it. So this is a review for Hair Raising Hair and with me today to discuss this are my good friends Essie McPeter and Blue Genocide. Say hi. I'm Gossamer. I'm the horror movie nerd so I'll be here. <laughs> so this is the 473rd in the series released in 1946 and it's directed by Chuck Jones. There are a few different ways to watch this copyrighted cartoon. You can see it on the Looney Tunes Gone Collection Volume 1, Platinum Collection Volume 3, and the Bugs Bunny 80th Anniversary set, and I'll have links down below. Because I can't show you the full cartoon here, and really it's a review, so I'm not going to show the full cartoon even if I could, but if in case you haven't seen this one, a Peter Lorre scientist sends out a, well, fake rabbit to get Bugs Bunny in order to feed his monster and the rest of the cartoon is basically the monster trying to get Bugs Bunny. Simple as that. What you're about to see is an audio commentary remix. I had to take down the original track due to a request from Warner Brothers Legal. So grab some popcorn and enjoy. Is that Peter Lorre? Hmm. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> of course it is. With this one, um, as we're going to see uh, very shortly, a uh, Groucho Marx uh, gag. Uh, but <laughs> there's Groucho there. Uh, with, with you know with the yeah. eyebrows and everything, uh, yeah. and this is of course the first appearance yes. of Gossamer, um, the monster, uh, the, the famous red monster that's only appeared in a few cartoons and yet um, has had quite an impact and he's on quite a lot of uh, merchandise and it was even in a recent Looney Tunes cartoons episode. The title music is the exact same title music as the hair-brained hypnotist. So there, yeah. there is also an early commentary from Greg Ford and Michael Barrier where they seem to cut it from two different things. It's really weird, but it's still great to listen to. As we hear Bugs say, you know, you don't have to lock that door, you know, I'm not, I don't want to leave. <laughs> okay, well, you know what, I'll start off with a couple little points that I want to bring up about the uh, actual cartoon itself and like a little bit of its references. Um, the castle design is very clearly, you may think it's like, first of all, um, Frankenstein. I don't think that's necessarily the case, even though that would make the most sense based on when this came out. Um, the backgrounds are very clearly German Expressionism, uh, Nosferatu, Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, uh, stuff like that from the silent period. As you can see with that background, very, uh, very angular designs there um, with the backgrounds and stuff. Um, so that's very clearly what uh, Jones's inspiration was. I guess if it's comparable to any of the Universal movies, uh, the number one answer I have for you would probably be um, the third and fourth Frankenstein films, uh, Son and Ghost of Frankenstein. Gossamer himself is very clearly um, based on like the Frankenstein monster type uh, character. Um, <laughs> his tennis shoes <laughs> seem to be a clear reference to uh, or maybe a bit of a joke to uh, the monsters, the Frankenstein monsters famous boots you know tennis shoes they're supposed to, i think it's supposed to be a joke there i think this one's just very cinematic it just goes pretty well with gag to gag i think it's jones just taking all the lessons that he's learned and just putting them in just to using what i guess was supposed to be a great one-off character but reappears in what i think is the lesser water water every hair this one i first saw actually on the bugs bunny superstar documentary and i'm sure a lot of people um that's how they saw it as well but there's even one scene that was in the Quack, Quack Busters, uh, directed by Greg Ford. So, Blue, you, you mentioned that you're actually not a big fan of this one, despite being a horror movie fan. Now, what are your issues with this one? Uh, I really do want to just say that, you know, I just... I don't know, maybe it's the fact that this cartoon has so much to do with water, water, every hair, and, like... I've seen this cartoon a million times, you know, I... Here's the Quack Buster scene. Yeah. Yeah, this is the Quackbuster scene. I don't know. Like, I feel like it doesn't do enough what it's referencing to, even though the backgrounds are very clearly inspired by it. Um, the monster is not very exciting. He's just... I don't know. I've never been a big fan of Gossamer, so... I guess a lot of my problems come to the fact that I feel like a lot of these gags have been reused. 
or have been used before. Like, we just saw Hair Tonic. I was on that commentary. The ending gag is almost pretty much the same kind of gag. And, you know, the, a lot of these gags are really old vaudeville gags at this point. Like, I, I've seen these a million times over. So I think yeah. that has something to do with it for me. Some of these cartoons, yeah, they're being played over and over and over again. You know, does that lessen their appeal? Like, like, does that make him overrated? I mean, I still think this is a classic just by seeing this so many times that I could probably reenact this cartoon in my head without watching it, you know? So it'll be an interesting one for people to answer. I love that evil scientist flashing. It's obvious, but I love it. I love that, I love that mirror scene. It's one of the classic moments in Looney Tunes history, in my opinion. <laughs> Just, you know, yep. um, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and also because there's Greg Ford references in the commentary, um, it, it's, it, it's kind of like a reverse thing where he looks at himself in the mirror and his reflection's mm-hmm. scared. And then later on, <laughs> when um, Bugs is saying, you know, look out there in the audience, it's like he's the reflection and he runs away. So it's kind of a dual I, thing. Where, double whether run. that's intentional or not, I don't know. But it's a walk yep. there. But you, you got to love, love that. Like the, the monster squeezing himself in this stupid uh, knight yep. outfit just just his look just how he got in there it's just just fantastic now as for the rating first of all i confirmed with blue he would give this one a seven and SC McPeter would give this one a 9. So you know what? I'm going to go in the middle and give it about an 8. Maybe even 8.5. This one is a really good cartoon, despite being perhaps overplayed. It's got a lot of great gags, and the monster, well, I quite like the design, despite what uh, Blue may think. So yep, yeah, make it 8.5. As we wrap up uh, with this wonderful gag, um, final thoughts, we'll start with you, uh, SC, this time. Yeah, I love this one. It's just really funny as we get to the greatest gag in this cartoon. And the greatest, one of the greatest deliveries. Probably, actually, in this cartoon, it probably is the greatest delivery. People! <laughs> just... People! Yeah, so good. But, Blue, final thoughts? Um, you know, do you at least like that part? <laughs> so, I'll let Blue watch another uh, Sniffles cartoons because he clearly enjoys that more than this one. So, um, in any case, we'll wrap it up here. Um, so thanks so much for listening, guys, and until next time, take care. Well, goodbye. And don't think it hasn't been a little slice of heaven, because it hasn't. That's all, folks. <laughs>